This episode is brought to you by IBM. I'm Howard Bowville, head of IBM Cloud Platform. Last year, cyber crimes cost the world $6 trillion. To address today's threats, clients need technology that gives access to data without compromising it. IBM's open, secure, hybrid cloud architecture ensures you are the only one who can access your data and keeps everyone else out, even us. Visit ibm.com forward slash cloud to learn more. On this episode of Winfluence. That is a really smart approach, wanting to layer in that strategy from the beginning. And the agencies that do it, they generally do it because they want all of their people to be in sync. They want strategy and creative production to all sort of be on the same page and in agreement on what they're doing and that they're serving the brand as best they can and that they're happy with the product because a lot of them have had experiences where the influencer piece was disconnected from the rest of it. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. The world of social media and content is changing again. It does that every so often, unfortunately, more often than we probably care for it to do so. Where Instagram, then Instagram stories were the content du jour for influencers and thus brands a year or so ago, now our focus is on snackable vertical video. Thanks, TikTok. Actually, platforms like TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts are just a continuation of the evolution of what consumers consume. Now, we can get into a chicken and egg discussion about what caused this. Did the social networks prioritize vertical video content that forced people to consume it? Or are people really so dumb they can't turn their phone 90 degrees and watch a video the way it was meant to be viewed, horizontally? The cause doesn't matter. The effect is in full force. TikTok is currently the dominant social content channel and mechanism consumers are spending time with. Instagram has responded with algorithm changes and outright guidance that short-form video is its priority. That presents an interesting challenge for brands and agencies whose creative departments are art school grads and cinematographers. That also created the space influencers and online content creators needed to emerge as highly relevant and useful partners for those brands and agencies. Where traditional creatives have perhaps been slow to adjust to creating short-form, snackable, and vertical content, TikTokers and Instagrammers have jumped in. Lena Katz and the team at Ampersand recently announced an interesting solution and approach to that agency creative gap for this content demand. Lena is the content and creator strategy lead at Ampersand. It is a production company that works on video and film productions from big budget commercial shoots to TikTok-like snackable videos. A few weeks ago, Ampersand announced an offering for its clients called Creator Integrated Services. They pull online content creators in at any and all steps of the marketing creative process to deliver better social video content and underlying marketing campaigns for the brands and agencies Ampersand works with. Lena also happens to have served a short stint at TikTok, so she had a look-see behind the curtain of the explosion that is that social network. I asked her to come on the show and tell us more about TikTok, more about Ampersand, and how it is solving the creative gap issue, how to overcome client objections to creator programs, and a lot more. Pay attention here, folks. Lena's thoughts on the industry and how to tackle certain issues is smart stuff, and it's all coming up on Winfluence. When you need to find the right TikToker or other content creator for vertical video or any other type of content, I certainly recommend you use Tagger. They are the presenting sponsor of this show and the influencer marketing platform I use every day to find, engage, hire, collaborate, review, and measure my influence marketing efforts. I actually sat down with a couple of content creators last week and showed them all the data that I have about them thanks to Tagger. They were really fascinated. I showed them how Tagger lets me find not just their engagement rate and followers, but how many actual people are engaged with their average content, how they compare to others that might be competing for the same brand dollars, and more. They quickly understood how I can narrow down the more right influencers for my clients. Now, I could go on, but you know I use Tagger every day. You should check it out, too. It might be right for your brand or agency. 
Go to jason.online slash tagger and get a free demo. That's all I'm asking you to do. Just go take the demo. Jason.online slash tagger and see if tagger is right for you. Jason.online slash tagger. When the creative team doesn't quite get the hot new social trend, but content creators do, Ampersand has one solution. Lena Katz is next on Winfluence. LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. A platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before. Because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. Lena, I know this uh, was about a year ago or so, and it's certainly not the most interesting thing about what you do, but I just have to ask, what was it like to work with TikTok? You were there on contract for a few months, and I would think it was pretty exciting to be attached to the rocket ship. Yes, it was. So working at TikTok for me was a pivot of my entire career. It was intentional. I had been kind of, I had been a consultant to Fortune 500 company and some other pretty big companies for about four years doing content strategy um, and specifically creator strategy, creator campaigns. And Instagram was getting monotonous and TikTok was constantly coming up in conversations. There was a lot of curiosity around it, a lot of excitement, but a lot of people, including me, just feeling like we didn't really have a handle on it. So, and I kept having this feeling that I was like paddling around on the outside of this huge Mm. ocean (laughs) and I couldn't get in. So when I saw the opportunity to go into creator strategy, which is the very small department, small team that handles all the, all the biggest advertising campaigns with creators integrated, that they just handle the creator side of it. So that was a must for me. I didn't really ask very many other questions about how senior do you need to be and you know exactly where could this go? And I didn't care. I just put everything else on pause. I told my other clients, I'm, I'm transferring everything over to someone who works for me so that we can kind of firewall what I'm doing. And I jumped and landed right in the middle of TikTok. <laughs> it, was, it was like the steepest learning curve ever. It moves faster than I've ever seen. I, it moves faster than you can imagine. Just the way that products are being developed, the way that things are being brought into the market, the speed that campaigns are executed, there's no comparison. So that's what it was like. It was actually, it's kind of emotional the first week because it was a lot. And because once you get in there, you realize how many thousands and thousands and thousands of creators are out there that are so brilliant and undiscovered. And if you're like me and you love the creativity of that world, I always compare it to like jumping into like the Disney ocean and there's all these amazing new animals floating around. So that's what it was like. I wanted to actually go back out into the larger world of advertising and marketing, which is where I came from, because I wanted to be able to continue to work cross-channel and work across all platforms, work, you know, on, if it's a digital spot, I wanted to be able to, to do that. And it was hard for me to be restricted to only one platform when I, I really felt that these creators deserved so much more exposure and everyone agrees with me, but you just couldn't do that within TikTok. It was only TikTok, which of course... It's to be expected, but I wanted to, I wanted to scale things up with every campaign. And so I had to go back out into the big world and now I'm back to doing that again. Awesome. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear that perspective because from the outside looking in, we always think about, oh, you know, TikTok's figured out a new way to do the algorithm and it's a, you know, different mechanism and consumers are so engaged with it, but it's interesting to hear the perspective of even their internal workflow and the way they do things is very different. So it speaks a lot about what they're doing, which is really cool. 
So I know that your career has encompassed a, a handful of roles and companies. You mentioned that, you know, you've been writing for, you know, some Fortune 100s or 500s or whatever. You've always been kind of rooted in content creation, whether it's creating that content yourself or working with other people who have. How would you define what you do, not in terms of your current job, but kind of what's your superpower? What do you bring to the marketplace? I started off as a writer, copywriter, lifestyle journalism, content, longer form content. Spent half my career doing that and felt like I maxed out with my voice. I had reached the limitations of what I could do with it and I was bored with it. So I jumped into casting because I was looking for something else to do. I was bored with myself. So I started engaging other people in a different way, not interviewing them, but trying to bring out something else in them, their storytelling. The more I did that, the more I got really into it. So now what I do is I engage the very best voices to tell a story or to paint a picture or whatever it might be. And I deploy them to do that. So it's still storytelling. It's still getting messages out there. It's just that now I'm a little bit more more behind the scenes and I find people who can do it 10 different ways and they're all coming at it a different approach, their own approach. And together they make a much more compelling whole than if it was just one person doing it themselves. So you, I want to talk now about how that manifests itself and that skill and superpower manifests itself in what you're doing because some news recently, you're at Ampersand, which is a you know production company, which serves a very, very important role in the world of advertising, but also is becoming a more and more important role in the world of influencer slash creator content support, whether it be for the brand or for the creators. But I want to give you the opportunity to give us a little definition to Ampersand and what it's doing, because it can do a lot of different things. It serves an an interesting role in the landscape. So give us a, a little peek inside what Ampersand is and where it sits and who it serves. Ampersand Inc. is an L.A.-based commercial production company. It sits under the umbrella of Aoi Pro, which is one of the biggest production entities in all of Asia. Ampersand is the U.S. hub for that company. And they are traditional commercial production. They're SAG. So that side of the business works with the biggest agencies and brands in the United States and globally. The people that run it come from like Ridley Scott's commercial production company and some very big places. So they're very well known for executing these kinds of campaigns, whether they're huge multi-million dollar budgets or, you know, we need to send like six people out to the desert to shoot a skydive or whatever it might be. So they can scale up, scale, scale down as needed. And the creator side of it, it just came to be because I had a conversation with the managing director when he was working on a project that had come from Japan, a Sony campaign. And he called me up and said, I hear that you work with influencers. And I was, you know, at TikTok. So I said, do not call them influencers. You don't need influencers. You need creators. (laughs) He said, what's the difference? (laughs) So I just sort of went off from there. And I do believe there's a very big difference. In fact, I think it's a seismic shift for the industry. So I was telling him that. And he has the lens of someone who has spent his entire career discovering up and coming directors and nurturing them and breaking them into the advertising scene. So he lives for that the way that I do. And I started sending him these TikTokers that were kind of in the filmmaking or animation or AR space. And he was blown away. And he was like, okay, these are not just models or promo girls or whatever. Like these are legitimately super talented artists. And we shared that feeling. So from that first project, we presented it to Sony and to, well, we didn't present it to Sony, I should say. We were, um, Aoi was working with their production company. The creators, the list that we were presenting to them were these amazing hybrids of, they were coders or illustrators, photographers, all sorts of different things, VFX, a lot of that. And the company ended up picking someone who was an augmented reality character a VTuber, somebody who was a very well-known singer on TikTok, Nathan Davis, and a gamer who they then actually, they got a partnership with PUBG and they put her into the game. 
for the spot. So it was this fascinating project. And I was saying all along, this is bigger than just one little digital spot. And it turned out to be bigger than that. It turned out to be, they decided to take it like global, all media, except for broadcast. So it was out of home, it was stadium, it was all sorts of stuff. And it was just a great first outing together as a team and with these creators to see how much more potential they had than just like showing up on a camera and doing a silly unbox skit. So from that time, even before that campaign launched, so I left TikTok at the end of December. And by the first week of January, we were talking about how to get this off the ground. And we just presented our idea to the leadership in Tokyo, and they were totally on board. Well, and that kind of leads me into this sort of next question I wanted to ask you. I know that one of the big challenges the more traditional ad agencies face these days is adjusting their creative outputs. A big ad agency can no longer just do TV commercials, outdoor print, digital display. They have to think in terms of the content consumers are in fact consuming. And and honestly, I've seen this with several agencies that I work with and know the art school creative set, if you will, isn't having an easy transition to concepting ideas for 15 and 60 second vertical videos for mediums like TikTok and Instagram reels and such. Why do you think, first of all, the traditional creative approach, why do you think that type is having such difficulty with this? And then what can we, as people who are, I guess, liaisoning with creators, do to help them get better? So I've seen some agencies that are actually very big and very traditional that are doing really well with this. And I've seen the opposite. Also, I've seen creative that was a travesty you know, a deck that was just, it was such a miss. So I would say the worst misses are when a team decides to try to pretend that they understand TikTok or they understand Snap or whatever it might be, Twitch, to pretend to the client and to the world that they totally get it and write this content or make this content mock-ups, you know, for this campaign. And they haven't bothered to do their research. They don't even, they'll tell you, oh, I don't even have an account. I don't have a login. And they just think they can fake it. And it shows. And it's not just me saying that, you know, the brand will, I've seen, you know, situations where the brand flags it and says this feels forced and whatnot. Because there's a lot of people out there that love the new mediums. You know, people that, there are brands and agency executives and whatever that have their own little slice of sub-community obsession that they follow on YouTube or on TikTok or wherever. You know, they might be really, really into like symmetrical baking videos or beauty transitions or whatever it might be, you know. So trying to fake it without knowing the first thing about it is a big mistake. And I find that the agencies and some of the brands also that that do the best are like, you know, I don't know everything about this. Maybe I don't know anything about this platform. They come at it from that perspective and they also come at it from, this is what I know, whatever, you know, their area of expertise is. And this is where I'm comfortable. And I want to partner with others who are equally knowledgeable and equally sort of involved in this other side of things. That's usually the best approach. And I have found that whether in fact they really do know nothing or whether they've done a lot of homework and they're pretty close to understanding it, doesn't matter. Like either way, that approach is the right approach because it allows for other opinions and other, you know, and for collaboration. And that's the whole spirit of TikTok. Well said. We're talking to Lena Katz from Ampersand. When we come back on Winfluence, I want to get into a little solution that that company, the production company she works with, uh, has formulated to help solve these problems in the marketplace. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back to Winfluence, spending some quality time today with Lena Katz on the program. She leads a newly donned creator integrated services at Ampersand, which she was telling us is a unique production company that has an approach to solving brand creative challenges, especially with the creator marketplace. And so the creator integrated services at Ampersand, I believe Lena is sort of this new approach that you guys announced not too long ago. Take us through what this new shift for Ampersand is and what problems it solves. Okay. Creator first is, is for most brands, not exactly the right approach because they also have to consider their client. And so 
We came up with Creator Integrated because it is the concept of pulling in creators at whatever stage you might need them and collaborating with them to a degree that makes everyone comfortable, the brand, the agency, the creators, and then us as the go-between. So that approach actually allows this to happen at any stage. It can happen during the strategy stage. You know, it, it might happen in terms of pulling in some creators to do research with their audiences on a particular product or whatever it might be that the agency is researching. It might mean you just pull them in at production. That's normal. I, I get a lot of calls from people who are starting to cast or they have an initial casting list and they just want us to take it from there. But you can pull them in earlier. You can sort of work with them as needed. And also this approach is intended to be for campaigns that are outside of just one social platform. You know, the standard creator campaign is, okay, I'm going to hire eight creators to post on TikTok, one video a piece. This is our budget. What can we get? And then you hand them the brief and then they all do their own version of it. That's the standard like template campaign. That's what all the tech platform service you can just sort of plug in, you know, your amount of deliverables, your rate, and how many creators you want, and you get what you get. So a lot of agencies want to do all kinds of other stuff, and they oftentimes don't know how to get started. And so we have come to just be the entity that whatever it is that you have in mind, even if you can barely verbalize it, just come to us and we will work it out. So we've gotten requests like, we want to do a TikTok director-led campaign that feels very TikTok, but there's no creators involved. And the director can't actually be on TikTok, like really crazy stuff like that. And when you drill down into that, like exactly what do you mean by that? Usually what it means in that case is they do want creators. They just don't want the influencer attitude the stigmatized one that's sort of come to exist in the last couple of years, the whole like, I'm going to just do what I do and no one else gets to have any buy-in and you don't get to see the creative until it posts. They don't want that, but they do want sort of everything else. So we have, you know, we've started really doing an intense search for TikTok filmmakers that are ready to level up and become directors for TikTok artists right. that can be plugged into the post-production phase. We do a lot of Music, obviously, because everybody wants to get into the music side of TikTok and it is surprisingly intimidating to try to start that off. So we've gotten requests to integrate creators into live events, maybe as hosts, you know, taking the place of what a celebrity might have done a couple years ago. That's a pretty common one. I did a really, really successful pilot with a creator let like it was an entire research project where they just used creators instead of doing a normal focus group. That was super successful. So yeah, I mean, I encourage everybody to come with their sort of out of the box things that they've had a difficult time even making a plan for. And at this point, like I have had a couple of agencies just be like, you know what, we just want to talk to you when it's time to layer in that strategy and, you know, whatever it might look like. So, and I do want to talk about that. That is a really smart approach, wanting to layer in that strategy from the beginning. And the agencies that do it, they generally do it because they want all of their people to be in sync. They want strategy and creative production to all sort of be on the same page and in agreement on what they're doing and that they're serving the brand as best they can and that they're happy with the product. Because a lot of them have had experiences where, the influencer piece was disconnected from the rest of it. And that doesn't work well for brands a lot of times. And, you know, and to that point, um, you know, one of the things that I've complained about, especially in the influencer content creator ecosystem where you've got managed services and you've got software companies and whatnot, a lot of people will will say, we're going to do influencer strategy for you, but they're completely disconnected from the overall marketing strategy. They're completely disconnected from the overall brand or business strategy. And they just come up with something that looks good or feels good in the influencer space. And ultimately the brand is generally disappointed or underwhelmed at least with what happens because there's not that unique tie in. Now to that point, you actually said something a minute ago that I wanted to kind of explore a little more deeply. I wholeheartedly agree with you that bringing creators in at all phases of the process, even in the research phase, is incredibly powerful 
and incredibly good and just makes the campaigns and the executions a lot better. But I would love to hear your response to this. There are a lot of agencies and brands out there that are trying to formulate influencer, you know, programs or add influencers onto what they're, you know, doing from a maybe a larger scale. And when you say to them, well, you know, you should really incorporate the creators early in the process. You should bring them to the table as a focus group, or you should have them maybe even survey their audiences to inform the creative decisions you're making and the strategic decisions you're making. And there are a lot of agencies and brands out there that when they hear that, they're like, why? We just want them to post content that we give them. What do you say to someone who doesn't quite get the power that they're missing out on? The whole notion of producing content and then asking a creator to post it is broken from the jump because most creators do not want to post an ad that's already made by someone else on their channel. Even if they're super brand friendly and they love to do collabs and they live off them, they still do not want to do that. It is like the antithesis of why most people begin creating for the social platforms they want to create. So I almost consider that a non-starter. If somebody comes to me and says, we just want creators to post something, that's kind of like a media buy exercise. And that's the closest thing to just being able to do it programmatically, I think, without any kind of human touch, because you really just have to find the creators who are comfortable doing that. So I don't get involved with that. But if it's the whole, we want to be able to manage the creative and control the messaging, That's a different need and that is understandable. And actually the way that I handle that is I say on a scale of one to 10, how comfortable are you with collaborating and actually hearing what the creators would do and getting way in and giving them some autonomy? How comfortable are you? I don't ask for a yes, no. I actually ask them to put it on a scale and they do. And then when I'm looking for creators, I ask them the same question only sometimes backwards, right? Like how comfortable are you taking direction? How comfortable are you with taking this messaging and putting it down in their words? You don't get to paraphrase or letting them have, you know, two rounds of approvals and, or how comfortable are you letting them in the room while you create? So I ask these really specific questions that are designed to have people self-select either into or out of the project, because there are people that can be incredible artists and, and you know, that the client will look at their work and be like, oh my God, I have to have this person. And it turns out that they're a bad fit because that person isn't comfortable allowing a brand in the room over their shoulder, you know, making edits. They just aren't. So I try not to present the people that are a bad fit work-wise. Most of the time I, I know people well enough or I know styles well enough to be able to say like, okay, we're, we're not even going to show this person because it's just not going to work out. But I do ask those questions and ask them, you know, I get really into like, what are they comfortable with? What do they, and not just like, you know, with the client thing, sometimes you'll hear, oh, well, you know, maybe we can just have the client like sit in remotely. Then I'm, I actually ask, is that what they want? Or they, do they really want to be there? And if it's, yeah, they probably want to be there. Okay. Well then let's just assume that's what's going to happen. So I suppose it's, you know, I always try to put together, okay, what is the worst case scenario? Is it going to be 30 people and there's going to be a microscope and, and then let's just plan around that. So that's how I do it. And I think that approach helps agencies feel comfortable. You know, then they ask like, how do you get involved? And the fact is I have gotten involved from not from being completely invisible and nobody knows I exist for like a year or two or three to people dropping me into the the presentation with the brand and saying, Lena works as head of influencer at our agency with like zero notice. So I've done both. I'm comfortable with both. So I kind of say like, what do you need us to be? And we'll just do that. How far do you think we are from a marketplace where brands want that full buy-in to have creators involved from the beginning? They trust that they're going to do a good job carrying that message forward and having the brand kind of let go a little bit so that creators can do their thing. How far are we from that being the norm? Probably a few years or more because it's going to be a cycle. I don't think there's ever going to be a magic moment where everyone is fully onboarded and okay, now, you know, we're going to involve creators from strategy. It's a cycle because everyone has to have that one great experience. Like this campaign worked perfectly. We loved these people. You know, I've got the creator on speed dial. Like once a brand or agency has that experience with a creator campaign, they want to do it again, put more budget behind it, blow it up bigger and keep it going until, you know, it's past its due date or whatever. 
So that's when brands and agencies come fully on board with the creator world. And the inverse is true. If they try something out and they have a bad experience or an icky experience or whatever, they're going to back up a little bit. So, or they're going to say, let's put this on pause for the entire year. So it's always going to be, you know, that there are more, more brands, more agencies that have tried it out, had that good experience and are willing to wade in a little bit further or the whole way. And there are also some that maybe got burned or didn't feel that they got the ROI that they needed and they're going to back off a little bit. So I'm seeing right now, you know, there's a lot of chatter in the influencer rep world specifically. Oh my God, we're going into a recession. People are pulling back budgets. Brands are scared. They don't want to work with us. It's all like there's a recession and what are we going to do? And it's, come on, like this happens every few years, right? Like times are really, really good during the start of COVID because nobody could leave the home and everything was a remote or virtual campaign. And now the cycle is going back to something else. So all that's happening is if you work in the creator space and you want to sell campaigns, you need to prove them out, prove out why does this creator deserve X amount of dollars a post? Or if that's not the kind of campaign that the agency and brand are doing, figure out a way that you can sort of integrate into what their actual plan is. So that's all that's happening right now. It's just the pendulum swinging the other way. And also there is sort of an inevitable movement to influencer marketing, creator marketing, becoming just a normal part of any marketing plan. That's happening bit by bit by bit by bit. And the way that it's happening, you can see it. It's going from, okay, we're going to let our PR team handle this and you know try to gift 100 people and see what happens to we're going to actually push some marketing budget. You're going to take it out of what we were spending like on digital ads and we're going to put it toward a media buy on TikTok. All of a sudden, budget is being shifted into the media and the media buying vendors. And it's also being shifted into, you know, we get a lot of calls from production. The production side is handling these campaigns for the ad agency where it used to be farmed out to PR or whatever. So we're seeing that it's being handled by performance marketing a lot for the direct consumer companies. So that means that budget is being moved from other places and it's being moved to more departments and whatnot within marketing. And for some people, that's scary. You hear a lot of, oh my gosh, I hate working on performance marketing campaigns because I, they all want us to show sales and we can't show, you know, we can't do that. Well, this is actually a good thing that this is happening. You just have to be able to, now you have to up your analytics game. Lena, what are brands still doing in the marketplace right now with regard to creators and whatnot that they shouldn't be doing? They are going to the easiest places that they can think of to find talent, i.e. the big agencies are running a, a, a search on their tech tool and they're coming up with the biggest names that they can find. And then they go to them to get rates from their rep and they get these astronomical rates and then they get scared and say, we can't do this. That's the wrong approach. I think that if, if a brand really wants to run a campaign and they are not looking for marquee names, then they need to really get into either hire a specialist that knows how to do it or get into TikTok creator marketplace themselves and really become familiar with the tool and, and the analytics and, and what it can do and start looking for creators that are not at that first level of fame yet, but are maybe two or three steps back, but that have certainly their own authentic following and that might be better at, at storytelling. They just haven't been discovered yet. And then when you find them, know what you, your rate is that you can afford and be willing to have a conversation or let someone have that conversation for you and, you know, approach it that way and start trying to f- discover good partners rather than just casting this one-time net and then getting disappointed with what c- comes back to you. Great stuff. Awesome. Lena Katz, where can people find you and Ampersand on the interwebs? Ampersand is Ampersand Inc., very important, dot com. I am there and um, I'm just Lena Katz on LinkedIn and lenacats.com is another way. Well, thanks for sharing some wisdom with us, Lena. I feel a lot smarter today. I'm sure the listeners do too. Appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. Really good stuff there from Lena. Glad you could hear what she has to say and how Ampersand is solving for that gap in what a brand or agency might have and not have when it comes to building short form snackable video content for today's social consumer. 
I'd love to know how your agency is faring on the TikTok Reels YouTube Shorts front. Pop me an email over to jason at jasonfalls.com. Let me know if your firm or your brand is still struggling creating your own content there. Are you tapping influencers and content creators to do so? Let me know. Jason at jasonfalls.com. If I feel like your perspective is good for everyone to hear, I'll certainly ask your permission before sharing. But I'd love to know just how are you faring with this? TikTok, Reels, YouTube Shorts, is your creative team at your agency having trouble with it? Or are they knocking it out of the park? I want to hear that too. Let me know. Jason at jasonfalls.com. Speaking of permission, which I will get yours before sharing any of that, if you email me, I'd like to ask, well, okay, it's really not permission. It's really just asking you for a favor. Help me spread the word about Winfluence. Tell someone who might want to know more about influence marketing about this podcast. Send them to winfluencepod.com or share a link to this episode on your social network of choice. If you have a moment, drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We are on all of them. You can also help make a future episode of Influence Awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com if you're feeling adventurous. Record a voice memo on your phone and email me that file. I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Winfluence is a production of Falls and Partners. The technical production is by podcasting360.com. Winfluence airs along the marketing podcast network. Thanks for listening, folks. Let's talk again soon on Winfluence. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. And if you need help with your influence marketing strategy, drop me a line at jason at jasonfalls.com. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results... It's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might enjoy as well. I'm Matt Bailey, host of the Endless Coffee Cup. In each episode, we talk more about marketing, culture, technology, and our digital lifestyle while having a conversation over coffee. Subscribe to the Endless Coffee Cup. Then pour yourself a cup, sit back, relax, and join the conversation. Just visit sitelogic.com or search for the Endless Coffee Cup wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.